Hey, 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 stop. Why are you always a turd? Some of you are really curious of what that leg Marissa and I found was. Welcome back to Cross Centers Boston. I'm Dusty. I want to give a special thanks for our sponsor today and one of my favorite companies, Redmond Agriculture. Uh, so we're going to pull down here. There's the herd. Hi, uh, guys. I want to respond to a question that I uh, got quite a bit on my recent video. Um, we're out here, Big Joe Herd. So I've been rolling out a lot of bells of hay, of course, and probably get tired of seeing that. I know, but some of you asked, why don't you cut and pull off the wrap but actually before you go in the pasture with the Big Joe herd? Hoss. He always let me know he wants to open the gate. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this wrap off real quick. My wife always replaces the blades for me. So nice. Stuff like that. Nice job. Cut pretty well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you why. Hey, hey, hey. Stop, get back, get back. Dude, why are you always a turd? You are always a turd. You don't have to be, but you are. You're the young whippersnapper that, you know, somebody's gonna compete against him. Yep, uh-huh, I know, I know, I know you. You're a pretty good looking guy, but you're a turd. That's what Brooks likes to call him. So. I'm gonna show you exactly why I do this. So let's pull the wrap off right now. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm getting, I get excited when I get down here. My eyes like, what in the world? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off real quick. Make sure I always get it all pulled off. Wrap is clear, it's off. And I'm gonna show you exactly why I don't take the wrap off before I pull in here. Here's the fun part, is trying to sneak in here. Get back, get back, get back, get back, get back, get back. Made it in here successfully. I don't need any attitude from you. All right, so here's kind of one of the reasons I do this. What are you doing, big boy? All right, so the problem is, is what typically happens, so this so is this typically, is typically what, happens. what happens. You've got, You've Big, got Joe, Big Joe and then, and then Hoss, Hoss right, back, right here. back here. Typically, typically Hoss, Hoss will come around, around the other side. Other side. And, and they will hit, they will hit it. it. They'll come up, they'll hit it, they'll break, they'll break it, apart. it apart. He's always, He's the, always the first one to get the fresh bell of hay. So when he does that, they're not doing it right now. Of course, when I put the cameras up, they're not going to do it. Of course. They're not gonna do it right now. But what typically happens is they'll both come up here, they'll eat it, and bulls being bulls will come up and hit it and break it apart. And so what happens is, right here in my space, this is where my main road is that goes in and out, up there where that cow is. And so if they're sitting here eating and knocking the hay down, and I go to roll it out, some are gonna stay here and eat. And see, it just fell. There's a piece of it that just fell You've got a female there and you got Hoss over there eating. And so you just see a piece of it broke. And so if, it, if the hay sits right here, now I'm gonna have trouble getting through here now. I've gotta open the gate and now it's tied on Marissa and I, but you can already see it's falling apart. Because if they get to it in time, now I could have hopped in my truck, done it pretty fast, obviously. But you see the challenges that I go through when I do this of hopping in, but they want to get to that hay as soon as possible. This is why I don't take it off first. The only thing I could say is if I hustled fast enough, 
I could get the gate shut and then hop in and take off and they wouldn't break it. So if I can beat them to let the hay out, if I can get down the pasture fast enough before they run to me, what kind of, uh, how they're feeling that morning or that day, if they're really spunky and fiery, they're gonna run and chase me. Sometimes they're pokey early in the mornings. And so if they're pokey in the mornings, I can get to where I wanna roll it out because I'm very specific where I wanna roll out that hay. We put it in bare spots. We don't just roll it out in the pasture. We're very specific on that. Here's the issue right here, and this is why I don't do it. So I don't mind getting to where I need to get, pulling the wrap off, and then roll it out before these knuckleheads get here. But this, this is typically how our mornings go. They're here waiting on us. So now I gotta get back to the, and she's kinda feisty. Don't know why. Hey girl, is Hoss bothering you? Huh, is he bothering you? Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and pull out of here. I want you to see what happens and what's left. If I give them a little bit of time to start hitting that hay and eating, you can see what's left. We're gonna put out some Redmond Mineral today, our Bison 90, and then something else that we've never used before is a Redmond Conditioner. Redmond Bison 90 is a sweetened premium mineral salt with over 60 natural minerals. And guess what? The bison love it. That's our favorite part about it. We had a mutual relationship with some people that was connected and already using Redmond products, and they introduced me to Bison 90. And so I said I'd try it, and our bison love it. If you're putting your minerals out, whether it's cattle, sheep, pigs, goats, whatever animal it is, if your animals aren't consuming those minerals, then you're wasting your time and your money. Our bison 90, the main mineral, we're going to mix with our conditioner. Everybody's watching me. We put out the Redmond Bison 90 almost year-round as much as we can. What's different about Redmond is its unrefined sea salt is the foundation of their bison products. Marissa and I actually got to go to the salt mine located in Utah last summer where we could see all the work that goes into what it takes to get into the Bison 90 products and all the products that Redmond makes. And it was really neat. Had a great experience. Made specifically for bison and other animals can consume it as well, such as cattle, sheep, or goats. They add extra levels of high-quality minerals to this mix. 90 parts per million selenium, copper, manganese, cobalt, iodine, and zinc. Mineral is important in all your animals. And for us, if we keep bison 90 out year-round, it makes us feel more comfortable. If your animals are low on minerals, lots of problems can occur. One of the most important things for a bison producer, such as ourselves, is conception rates. This type of mineral out year-round can help increase the conception rates on all of our breeding females. Guys, you can go order your bison on or any other Redmond products for any type of livestock, including cows, goats, and even your garden. Today, at the link in your description below, use our code for your special discount. I just want to give a special thanks to Redmond Agriculture for supporting our channel, family, and a ranch by sponsoring today's video. All mixed. Just getting a little taste of it. Here comes Big Joe. Let's see what he thinks. You just probably smell the cubes. Oh, him and Hoss want to fight a little. You guys behave. It's not even breeding season.
So here's a good example. We've got a couple right here that have been eaten uh, from the piles that were left. And then here's what's, here's what's the issue is, it's not terrible right now, of course, but we've got hay left right here. So if there was some, you know, a, a bull right here or something hanging out, like these two are close because there's some right there, but if there was some bulls over here, we would have issues getting back to this gate and that's what we won't, we don't want to face. So that's why I don't take the wrap off before I get in the pasture. Okay. So, um, I, I can make a couple of sac sacrifices if I get there and hustle, I can get the wrap off and not worry about it. But if I start to film and stuff and I'm just catching them running, cause it's fun. I like to catch them running. And if I do that, then it slows me down a little. And that's okay, because I'm just trying to admire, I'm just trying to soak in how awesome these animals are, basically. And uh, sometimes I slow down in life a little bit to film, but uh, this is the problem, is you have hay left like this. And so that's just why we do it. And I know some people will still maybe argue with me or, or, or say differ, but that's just the way we do things. And I feel comfortable with it. And as long as I can beat them and take it off, that's what I should do and I feel comfortable with. So I just don't want it piled up right here. Now we got the gate open. Only a couple stragglers, some are making their way back. Got our girl. We'll pull in here. Somebody's trying to come through the gate, I see. I see you trying to be sneaky there, 113. Perfect example, I beat her to it because she made her way all the way around, followed where I rolled it out, and led her right back here. Now she has her own pile so she can eat out of, and she'll stay here a while. Here comes Belle Stark. Gee, she's huge. Look at that belly. Woo! Dang, Bell. Some of you are really curious of what that leg Marissa and I found was. Some of you said, it looks like a deer. It's definitely a cow. Some people said, what if it's one of the calves that you uh, buried? A couple red dogs last summer. I had a very rough summer. Hopefully we don't go through that again. But what I wanted to show you is to answer some of those questions. And some of you said that maybe a dog dug up those red dogs. Well, this is the area where we uh, buried those red dogs. So under these pecan trees here, native pecan trees, actually they're both right here is where they're buried. I put a panel there to prevent um, animals from really digging up the whole thing. I need to pull it out because you can see here, I had one right there and then I had another one right there. I put both of them right next to each other. I put the panel over it just so the grass would establish, get some organic matter to establish here and so it grow, but there's no disturbance or anything right here. So this is definitely not a red dog leg. Plus it's a really big bone guys. It definitely couldn't be a deer. It is a thick bone. I think, uh, you know, we pretty much narrowed it down last time, but pretty sure it's a bovine because of the thickness of it. Matter of fact, it's still right here. So if this gives you any idea of size, all right, this is what we cut our hay with. We'll run, flip it over. That's what we're dealing with. You can see the size of it. That's a big bone. And so if this was where the hoof was, okay, that's, that's how big it is. Way too big for a deer obviously bison or cow and we don't have any bison missing so more than likely bovine it is again i want to give a special thanks to redmond agriculture for supporting our channel family and ranch by sponsoring today's video highly recommend this company order your bison 90 or other redmond products for cows goats and garden today at the link in our description below use our code dumbbar for a special discount thank you redmond